Welcome to Firewalls.com's video series on SonicWall Gen 7, The Basics. I'm Nate McKnight with Pro Services. In this video, we're going to discuss how to optimize security with SonicWall interface bridge modes. Interface bridging allows us to create segments between our networks. We're still within the same broadcast domain, but now we're forcing all traffic between these segments to traverse the access control lists and next generation firewall security scanning. It also enables us to increase security without disrupting the current logical topology. Okay, the first interface bridge mode we'll talk about is layer two bridge mode. And as you can see, there are some key points here uh, is that it is a bridge pair. There's a primary host and a secondary host, and these hosts can be in different zones. Um, you can block non-IP traffic, Spanning tree protocol is supported, multicast, broadcast, IPv6, all supported. We can disable routing between the bridge pairs. Also, we can uh, filter VLANs. One drawback, though, is that you can't use the firewall's internal DHCP server. You must host a separate DHCP server on your network. The other drawback is that you can only do this with one-to-one -one interface pairing. So now let's consider a use case for this layer two bridge mode. Imagine you want more security between two groups of hosts on a single subnet. Uh, L2B allows you to segment this subnet, forcing all communications between these hosts to traverse the firewall. This achieves better management and security. Uh, so and this includes the scanning for viruses and intrusions. So let's take a look at how to implement this. First, we'll go to network and interfaces and say our LAN is on X0, and we want to plug in another segment uh, on an unassigned interface. We can select to edit, and then we can say what zone we want it on. It doesn't have to be the same zone. It can be a different zone. So in this case, we'll say DMZ, and then for mode, we'll choose layer two bridge mode. Now here's where we bridge to the parent interface. X0 is the bridge host now. And then here's the extra administration options we have. And then we can also look at VLAN filtering. We'll click OK and load this interface up. And then we can see that X3 is the secondary bridged interface. And X0 is the primary bridged interface. So now we have a DMZ zone and LAN zone. We can tailor our security scanning based on zones. Moving on to port shield mode. We can see that there is no pairing, but we can bridge multiple segments. In fact, as many segments as you have interfaces. The interface must be assigned the same zone as the interface being port shielded to, and uh, firewall DHCP is supported. These port shielded interfaces are lumped into port shield groups, making it easier to manage our zone-based access control lists. So why would we use port shield compared to layer two bridge. Well, if you need the DHCP service from the firewall or you have a need for multiple segments, uh, creating a port shield is as easy as selecting an interface. And then selecting the zone of the interface you want to port shield to, in this case LAN, and we'll choose port shield and choose X0. Again, this creates a simplified approach by creating a port shield group. Here we can toggle on show group. And it will show X3 as a port shielded to X0. So all hosts on this segment will receive DHCP addresses from the X0 DHCP server. Next we have native bridge mode and that allows us to create multiple segment bridging as well. It supports bridging wireless to wireless interfaces and virtual interfaces. Native bridge members inherit the zone from the parent interface. Lastly, I recommend enabling firewalling with other bridge members. This allows you to monitor traffic between these interfaces. Note that in a packet capture, all traffic will appear to come from the primary interface. So why use native bridge mode? Well, it's more flexible. Say you already have a wireless network set up for your internal interface, W0. This subnet's been in place for some time, uh, but you added an access point to extend your wireless network. So to do this, you may create a virtual network off of X0. We'll assign X0 the WLAN zone, and then we can native bridge it 
to the W0 interface. Now we've extended our wireless network, created a bridge, and we haven't sacrificed any security. Last, we'll talk about transparent mode. This is a little different. We can see that we can also do multiple segment bridging. We can bridge trusted zones to the untrusted zone. Lastly, you may have a number of public-facing web servers. With transparent mode, address translation is not necessary. To quickly demonstrate, we'll choose an unassigned interface, select a zone, choose transparent IP mode, and the transparent range is an address object that will create that looks like any other address object. We can decide what zone it's in, what kind. It could be one public IP or a range of public IPs. This public IP range will have to be part of your WAN subnet. And then we can secure this traffic with zone-based access rules. That's all I have for this video. Thanks for watching. This has been Optimizing Security with SonicWall Interface Bridge Modes. For more videos and content, check out firewalls.com. Like and subscribe.